My name's Angela and I'm a visually impaired designer. Color blindness explained. Hey everyone, how are you doing? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new, my name's Angela and I'm a visually impaired designer. I do videos about visual impairment and design and how they cross over. In today's video, I'll be talking about color blindness, which is something that I've mentioned but haven't really gone into detail about yet. So first we'll talk about what color blindness is and the different types of color blindness that exist. Then we'll talk about how this might affect how you design something and some tools you can use to help you simulate what it would be like to be colorblind so that you can better relate to those who do have color blindness. But before we get into the video, make sure that you subscribe to my channel below and that you turn on the notification bell. Now most of us have heard of color blindness or even know someone who has it. Or we've seen tests roaming around the internet with a large circle with a bunch of little circles that are colored that form numbers to see if we can see the number in order to know if we're colorblind or not. But what exactly is colorblindness and how does it work? Colorblindness is a condition that affects a person's ability to be able to distinguish between different colors. And this can range from being a mild to a severe impairment. Just like I've explained in previous videos, Everyone can see differently as far as their vision goes, and colorblindness is no different. So everyone can see a different amount of colors. Some colors that someone without colorblindness can see start to look like the exact same colors to someone who is colorblind. The term colorblindness might be deceiving because it might make some people think that if someone's colorblind, that means they are blind. But in fact, people who are colorblind fit anywhere along the vision spectrum anywhere from perfect vision all the way to blind. So being colorblind doesn't affect your vision at all. It just affects what colors you're able to see. Now a brief overview of the science behind colorblindness as I understand it. We all have about 120 million rods in our retina which help us be able to see mainly in the dark. And then we also have about 6 million cones in our eyes and the combination of these cones and rods helps us be able to see color. Now of the 6 million cones that we have in our retina, they can have a short, medium, or long wavelength. Or these are tied to the colors red, green, and blue. So a third of the cones that we have are red, a third of them are blue, and a third of them are green. Now the three different type of color cones we have overlap to create different colors that we can see. Now when one of the cones is shifted too far, it limits the amount of colors that someone can see which causes color blindness. It's also possible that people have cones that are missing and that would cause a more severe type of color blindness. Color blindness is usually inherited or a genetic characteristic and it's carried through the X chromosome, which means men are more likely to be color blind. One in 12 men or 8% are color blind, whereas one in 200 or 0.03 women are color blind. I don't consider myself an expert on this topic, and if you want to know more about how color blindness works, I highly suggest this other YouTube video that I found that really helped me understand it better. So I'll make sure to link it below so you can watch it after this video. Now let's talk about the three main types of color blindness that exist. Now as a reference to explain the different types of color blindness, I will refer to this rainbow to help visualize colors someone with that type of color blindness can see. Duetronopia. The first and most common type of color blindness is duetronopia. 5% of men have this type. Someone with duetronopia has a green deficiency, which can make it difficult to distinguish between greens and reds. Protonopia. The second type of color blindness is protonopia, and this is more rare. Only about 2.5% of men have this type. Someone with protonopia has a red deficiency, which can make it difficult to distinguish between reds and greens. These two types of color blindness are the most common and are very similar, they just affect different cones. As you might be able to see here with the two rainbows, with detronopia on top and protonopia on bottom. An interesting example to think about in real life with these two types of color blindness is a stoplight. Now think about it, the people who are colorblind in these two groups 
probably just have to memorize that red is on top and green is on bottom so that they don't get into any accidents going through a traffic light when they shouldn't be. Tritinopia. The third type of color blindness is tritinopia, which is very rare. Only about 0.5% of men and 0.03% of women have it. Someone with tritinopia has a blue deficiency, which can make it difficult to distinguish between blues and yellows. Monochromatic. And the fourth type of color blindness, which is extremely rare, is when someone sees in monochromatic grayscale. So they see from black to white and they can't see any color at all. So as we look at the different types of colorblind rainbows, I think it's interesting to note that black, white, and shades of gray can be noticed on all of the different groups of color blindness. Knowing this, it can be used as a powerful design tool. We can use these colors to make our designs more accessible for people with color blindness. I wanted to show you a picture of the colorful scenery of Times Square with each type of color blindness being simulated to visualize the differences in context for you. First here we have Deutronopia. Then we have Protonopia. Then Tritonopia. And finally Monochromatic. Unless you're colorblind, you're gonna have to use your imagination to think about what it would be like to see this way 100% of the time. Imagine you're a child and you don't realize yet that you see differently than the majority of the people around you. And your teacher asks you to bring her a green notebook, but instead you bring her a red one and the whole class starts to giggle and laugh at you. Or you're excited to show your friend your newly painted bedroom and she argues with you for 10 minutes about what color it is and she makes you feel bad for not seeing color the same way she does. Or you're a college student who works at a restaurant where your employer relies on you being able to tell the difference between color-coded labels to know what item to give to your customers, but you're too embarrassed to tell your employer, and so you do your best to use process of elimination to figure out what order goes to who. So for those of us who aren't colorblind, we need to find ways to build empathy for those who are colorblind. We need to create designs and systems that work for anyone, regardless of what color they can see. We can use texture, pattern, shapes, sound, or even smell to help us with a design system. And when we do need to rely on color, it would be great if we could be more intentional about what pairing of colors we use. Just like other impairments, it's important to remember that colorblindness has emotional struggles with it as well. And it's not all about just being able to see the correct colors. We need to do our best to be inclusive of those who are colorblind and not just expect them to adapt to their surroundings. Once again, just remember that this is something they have to deal with 100% of the time. And that can't be easy. And there are some simple ways that we can test whether or not a design will work for someone who's colorblind. Now keep in mind that these designs were built for digital things, but you could also use them for print items to simulate it and then print it out to make sure that you think it's working well and it has high enough contrast. I want to clarify that none of the websites or resources that I provide in this video were sponsored. These are just things that I use on a regular basis and have found to be helpful. I'm going to show you a couple of my favorite tools now. The first tool I'm going to show you is on colorblindness.com. Now this is a website where you can go and you can put in an image. I went ahead and dropped in my New York image that I used earlier. And it will show you how it looks normal. Then you can change it so it would show you what it would look like with a weak color blindness. Then you can change it to propanopia, deuteronopia, and tritinopia. You can even see what it would look like in monochromatic grayscale. The second tool that I like to use is Color Oracle. You can find it at colororacle.org and it works for Mac, Windows, or Linux. Color Oracle is great because it shows you a real-time simulation of what it looks like to have a color impairment. And then once you've downloaded the application, all you have to do is go to the icon on the top menu bar and you can switch through the different modes if you want to see a specific type of color blindness. Now let's take a look at my website to see how well it works for people with color blindness. 
Let's see what it looks like in each of the different modes. I use black and white as my main colors and then I have some bright colors for an accent. Everything is still legible, so I'm happy with that. My portfolio projects use a lot of different colors, so let's look at that section. And I will go ahead and look at this cookbook I designed so that we can see what colors look like here. I did use color coding for the table of contents, but I also paired each one with an icon so it wasn't just based on color. I might still explore some alternate color options to optimize the design for those with color blindness. Next, let's take a look at Pinterest. This could give you a good idea if your pens are working well for those with a color deficiency. Lastly, let's look at an item that is typically color coded, a map. We will look at the New York subway map. Now if we look at the map in the different modes, you can start to see how difficult it becomes for someone who is colorblind to interpret the different lines. A lot of the colors start to look the same, and when we look at it in grayscale, this becomes very apparent. One helpful tip is to design in grayscale first or early on in your design process to make sure it works first, and then you can add color. This really helps me improve the design without relying heavily on the color. Well, that's everything I have for you today, but I hope that you've learned a little bit more about color blindness and that you'll consider running some simulated tests next time that you have a design or a system that you're thinking about creating and that you'll keep in mind those with color blindness and try to not rely solely on color. If you like this video and want to see more that are similar to this, please subscribe to my channel below and turn on the notification bell so that you can hear about any videos that I have coming up. I hope you all have a great day. Bye!